smart though. All right. The essential question for today is how can we use a normal curve to predict uh, percentages? So first we need to know what is a normal curve. So here's the deal. The average height of an American man is between 5'9 and 5'10. Now, um, you're going to find that you already have an intuitive idea of what a normal curve is. Um, say if you randomly selected 100 men, knowing that um, the average height is 5'9, somewhere between 5'9 and 5'10. Here's my first question. Would you expect that more men would be 5'10 or 6'1? 5'10 or 6'1. Probably 5'10. Most people would uh, instinctively understand that more men would be 5'10 because of the way that's... Why? Well, let me not say why. Why did you say 5'10 and not 6'1? Me? Yeah, you were the only one. Oh, Right, the average is going to be more common. Yes. Most of you guys instinctively have a feel for that. So in the same way, would you expect there to be more guys to be um, six foot one or six foot four? Six one, you'd expect to be more common. Six four, that's pretty tall, more rare. Um, and so on, even on the other end of the spectrum, five nine versus five three, which would be more? Probably the five nine. You expect there to be multiple guys that are five foot nine because that's that's a uh, pretty much the average height um, but five three will be relatively short for a fully grown guy um, so you would expect there to be fewer of those okay so basically in general um, you would be expecting to have more people that are closer to the average and fewer people as you get closer to the extremes either really tall or really short you get fewer and fewer so basically, if we kept, um, if we made a frequency table to reflect that, it might look something like this. Um, so ignore the little arrows; they don't really mean anything. Um, yeah, I said ignore the arrows. So let's um, let's do that. Um, so there are a hundred people. So this would be an example, like a sample of what you might find um, height-wise in each range. So for example, you might find seventeen guys that were five foot ten. I think I had mentioned six one. Um, by comparison, only six of those guys would have been likely to be six one. If we go up to six four, you're down to only one guy. So you see the chart reflects uh, the further away you get from the middle, the fewer and fewer they're going to be. So that sort of fits our common sense. Um, this type of curve, the formal name for it is a normal distribution. So that key word is normal. Okay? Um, it's informally called a bell curve because of the, of the way it sort of looks like a bell. Um, but it's a normal distribution. Um, this kind type of pattern is very useful because it shows up so often in the real world. So if we really understand it, we'll have a window into a lot of different um, fields. For just a few examples, um, any physical characteristic, like I, I was just mentioning height, but it wouldn't matter whether we were talking about um, the size of your shoes, how big your nose is, how far your eyes are apart, or almost any physical characteristic you could measure, you'd expect to find a bunch of people with the average measure and only a few people out at the extremes, either really big, really small, whatever, um, there'd be few people like that. Um, we could talk about climate. In the previous class, we talked about rainfall. If we were talking about average rainfall of 100 cities, you'd expect to find a lot of cities with about average rainfall, and you'd expect to find very few cities with no rainfall, and very few cities with an extreme amount of rainfall. So again, any sort of climate feature is likely to be a normal distribution like this. Okay, um, just running through a couple more examples. Economics, you know, whether you're talking about money of a family or a company or a country, um, you would expect, um, if you're talking about average wealth, you'd find a lot of people that had close to just an average amount of money. Um, there'd be only a few people that'd be on the Bill Gates 
Zuckerman level. And um, I want to believe that there'd be a small percentage of people on extreme poverty. But most people are in the middle. So that would make that bell shape if you graphed it. Um, OK, so you get the idea. Intelligence, scores, things like that form that same thing. A bunch of people at the average, few geniuses, few people on the other extreme. You raising your hand for genius? Very good. OK, all right, that was just background so you'd understand sort of what the point is. Now, the essential question was how can we use um, the curve like this to make predictions of percentages? And here's basically how. This is so common that the scientists and economists spend a lot of time playing with the numbers and studying them. And they have found certain principles to be true. And we're just going to memorize them, starting with these three numbers. So between now and two minutes from now, you guys are going to memorize these three numbers. The first one is 68%. It's all about standard deviations from the mean. The mean is in the middle. If I go out one standard deviation in either direction, I'm capturing 68% of the data. Memorize that. If I go out two standard deviations in both directions, now I've captured 95% of the data. So 68%, 95%. Memorize that. If I go out three standard deviations, now I've captured 99.7% of the data. So memorize those three numbers. One standard deviation, 68%. Two standard deviations, 95%. Three standard deviations, 99.7%. Memorize those three numbers, like right now. OK? I'm going to give you like 15 seconds to memorize these numbers. Study them for 15 seconds. So class, what percentage of the data is going to be in this zone right here? That's your 68%, one standard deviation away from the mean. What if I go two standard deviations? It's 95%. And what if I go three standard deviations is going to be 99.7%. All right? So hopefully you understand you have to memorize those numbers. All right, flip your notes back over. Okay, now look, there's more. I need you to memorize all these numbers. Now, all these numbers can be derived from the three numbers. If I subtract, for example, let me, uh, the first one is obvious. All right, right. If the, um, if the middle um, uh, standard deviation is 68%, of course, that's going to be 34 and 34. So if I start uh, subtracting and dividing, I could find all of these numbers. But you do not want to be having to calculate these numbers over and over and over again every time you do a problem. Trust me, with just a few minutes of time spent studying, um, probably most of you will just learn it in class. You will have all of these numbers memorized. Um, but make sure you just memorize all the numbers. They're not as many as they look because they're the same on both sides. So it's not as bad as it looks. OK? Um, let's move on. But we must memorize all these numbers, guys. Let's do that. Now, look at example one. Let me keep track of the time over here. I got it. I saw it. It's a big clock right there. Um, example one. Let's label this and so you can see how this works. The mean always goes in the middle of the chart. So in this case, the mean is 52. So everyone's going to put 52 right here on the chart. Example one chart. Not problem number one, example one. Um, then comes the standard deviation. Um, in this case, guys, the standard deviation is 12. Now, we use that standard deviation to figure out what the other numbers are. Every one of these marks is a standard deviation away. In other words, if this is 52 and the standard deviation is 12, 64. 64, because I'm going a standard deviation added on every time. So it's like I'm adding 12 because that's the standard deviation. So this is going to be 64, and then what? 69. No. 
76, and then what? What's next? 76, and then 88. And then 88, okay. So that'll be, that's one. Um, what about on this side? What am I going to have on to the left? 40. 40 and then 28 and then 16. Any questions about where these numbers are coming from? Anybody lost? No, you just don't speak anymore, please. Okay. Look at problem number one. Um, look, you guys are going to have to draw this yourself. You're not going to be given the little curve. So just watch this real quick. Um, it's not going to be pretty. Um, and yours are not going to be pretty either for the most part. But that's okay. Just do your best. Start by just drawing a horizontal line. Go ahead and draw yourself a bell curve as best you can. Something similar to this. Okay, so now I have myself a bell curve going. Um, draw one line right down the middle. That's going to be our mean. Do this with me. Stay with me. This is uh, problem number one on the back. Now, put, a, put two marks. Put a mark on the end, almost to the end, but not all the way. And then on the left side, again, almost to the end, but not all the way. So we have three marks so far. We need four more marks to finish this off. I'm going to change colors to make it obvious what I'm doing. So I have the middle and then I have the end. Now inside of here, I'm going to put two marks now. Just space them out as evenly as you can. So I might put one mark here and one mark here. Okay, so it's like two marks on each side. Um, so then I'm going to put one mark here and one mark here. All right, so that's how you set it up. You'll get better at it as we go. Now I'm going to cheat and use my graphic, though. Um, where is this 18 going to go, you guys? That goes in the middle because that's the mean. So everybody write that down. How am I going to use this standard deviation of 3.5? Add it, it. Add it and subtract it from the mean to get the other value. So watch this. Blam. 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 blam? <laughs> yeah, there's another blam coming, but stand by. Um, I'm just adding 3.5, 3.5, 3.5. To the left, I'm going to subtract. So minus 3.5, minus 3.5, minus 3.5. All right, is everyone understanding where I'm getting these numbers from? Yes. Okay, very easy. Now, don't forget about the rest of these numbers that we are supposed to memorize. Okay, the 34, 13.5, 2.35, and 0.15. Memorize those values, okay? If you do, you'll be able to answer the rest of all these questions. So, glance at number two. Now, I'm going to draw this faster than you can because it's a sting day and I'm running out of time. So, really, you could just watch me. Okay? If you feel like drawing this real fast, that's fine. I'll, I'll, but you don't have to. Optional. Um, but observe. Similarly to what I just did. There's my mean in the middle. Standard deviation is 2.5. That gives me these values, just like that. Now, the question is, the, here's the first question. What percent of men are taller than 74 inches? Now, look, here is 74 inches right here on my graph. Taller than 74 inches, of course, is going to be to the right. All right, so here's where I can make these predictions. Because I've memorized all these little percents, all I have to do now is add. Um, if I add up these percents, that'll tell me the percentage of men that are taller than 74 inches. What do I get if I add these two percents? It turns out to be 2.5%. Okay, look at question C. Between what heights do the middle 95% of men fall? Now, that number should look familiar. Remember the three numbers that we memorized at the beginning? Is that one standard deviation or two? That's two standard deviations. So that means from here 
to hear. They just say between what height? So we will just say 64 to 74. Start packing up as you continue to listen. Um, what percent of men are taller than 64 inches? That would be all of this. This entire area. So that's going to turn out to be... 84 percent. 